How's it going guys? Today we are doing a problem solution manner. I posted a poll to my community tab and at the time that I checked it, this one had the most votes. It was very neck and neck with something else, so that other thing will probably come out next week. Uh, it does need a little more polish anyway. So this is a um, problem solution kind of format. So I started working on something and um, I came across a lot of problems and I had to make small simple solutions but it might not be apparent to everybody the best way to solve it especially with another one that people didn't vote for but i think it was a bit obscure they don't know what i was talking about so one of the problems is locking player head rotation so an old method was to tp the player to themselves constantly and that would make it so that they can't move and they're kind of frozen in place but that no longer works i guess it was a bug so when you try it if you're making a map you will just notice um it's there's a little jittering uh, it's harder to tell because my frame rate has dropped a bit because um, I'm recording, but there is some jittering and it can be hard to actually flick the switch again sometimes, um, but the lower frame rate actually helps make it easier. <laughs> it's weird. When you're at 120 frames, um, you can notice the jittering even more, but yeah, so you don't really stay in place and you would expect this to work. Uh, you can see there is some weird bugginess with right there when I right clicked. Um, but it doesn't actually work. There, there was a little jitteriness. So how do we solve this? Because obviously it's very important in an adventure map to be able to freeze frame a player, and this does not work. So I'm going to be going over that solution using a data pack. And uh, if you don't know how to make data packs, I suggest you check out my data pack tutorial video. It goes over how to start data packs and it gives you a place to jump off of, which is what I'm using right here. This one is just a test data pack, uh, but it does give you a place to start with. Um, so you can do this in command still, but it's less multiplayer friendly because you could have, uh, if you lock two people's heads at the same time, since commands don't all play for the same person, then you have some ambiguity and you could accidentally lock two players to uh, the same location. So you actually need a helper entity to accomplish this. You're going to need something to TP the player to, and you're going to need something to remember whose is whose. So in the init function or the load function, this is the function that is loaded when you first open the data pack, you're going to create a scoreboard. And you really need to follow along with this because I'm not going to put the download in the description because I'm doing this arbitrarily in my test data pack. It's too small. There's too few commands for me to like release a set, whole data pack. It's, you can just follow along. So you want to create a scoreboard called, uh, I'm going to call it OID. And uh, this is just going to be some kind of ID. All right. So there's two methods you can do with this OID thing. You can either have every player get their own ID when they join the world, and you can come up with some method to check uh, if somebody doesn't have an OID, which is what I'll do. There's a second method where you can increment a counter. So every time you lock someone's head, there will be a different number. That's another method. Uh, it really just depends on what system you're using. Uh, but anyways, so I'm going to do uh, execute as at a unless score at s OID equals uh, matches zero. So unless they have some number on OID, run function test colon new ID. Uh, so let me add a subfolder to this so that I can uh, mess around. Let's call it headlock and we'll create a file copy and paste and call this new ID. So this just gives some players a value so that it can be multiplayer friendly. So now we can do scoreboard players add a fake player called systems OID one and then scoreboard players operation at s oid equals system oid so i have a similar thing going on in my object linker data pack but we're kind of like going down with the basics of how it works so every time that a new player is added it increments a counter and makes the player that new value so when i'm added i will get one but when my friend is added then he will this will add one to one and get two and he will get two so it's as simple as that. Now, that's all we need. So every time a new player joins, they're going to get the new ID. So the next thing is head locking. So basically, we want to uh, lock somebody's head. So we're going to create a function called uh, lock. And we're going to need one called unlock. And it's really as simple as that, which is why I'm not adding this to the description, because it's very simple. We just need those three functions. Um, and some messing in the main, which is the tick, which runs 20 times per second. So inside the lock, let's clear this file and inside the unlock, let's clear it. All right. So 
In the lock, we need to create an entity that the player can teleport to. So we're going to summon area effect cloud right here. Tags of headlock. And that's it. And then we're going to give it another tag of new. There's some other stuff that you need to add here. And let me grab that for you real quick. So this is the additional things you need. Uh, age of negative max integer, duration of negative one, wait time of negative max integer. Um, so those kind of things you can add, uh, they basically just make the area effect cloud stay alive forever. You can do this with a armor stand, but area effect clouds are the most efficient entity in the game, as far as I know. So area effect cloud, basically is an invisible little marker entity you can TP people to. It's hard to check them in radius, but they're good for markers like marking points. So now we have the area effect cloud summoned and now we need to do, uh, and I can add an extra thing to make sure. So execute at at s run. So just to make sure that it gets spawned at the player who plays this function uh, later down the line, you could forget to uh, specify that it's done at the player, so it could lock them in the wrong place. So this will just uh, force it to spawn at the player who plays this function. So then we just have to do uh, scoreboard players operation. And now we basically want this area effect cloud to have the same scoreboard number as my ID. And that's really easy. So scoreboard players operations, OID, uh, at E tag equals headlock, tag equals new, OID equals at S OID. So the one that is specifically new has the OID, and then you can do tag remove new. So now it's no longer new. So you add this extra helper tag when you spawn it so that you can um, like know that this is a new one, but then you remove it at the very end of the file so that when you spawn another, you don't set their scores multiple times. So this is it. And now we have to do, uh, we can also add something where we go tag at S add headlock. All right, so execute as at a tag equals headlock. Now we just have to find an entity that has the same score as me. So what we do is we go as at e tag equals headlock type equals area effect cloud. And adding this type actually makes things faster. I'll go over that in an optimization video sometime. Um, anyways, so as all of the entities that have headlock that are area effect clouds, you're going to check if their score of OID is equal to at p OID. So at P, it's still going to be the player because uh, let's at, change that to at. So at everybody, then as, and then at P is still going to be that original player. Run TP at P to at S. So you're at the player already, right? Then you're as the every entity that exists, every headlocker that exists. And if that headlocker has your score, the score of the nearest player, who is you because you're at, the, at that player, then TP the nearest player who is you to the targeted uh, one that was successful. And that's all you need. That'll TP you to them. Now what you need to do is the unlock will just do tag at s remove headlock. And we're just going to copy this. So this will let us figure out which one has the same score as us. But instead of TPing, it will just kill that thing. And at S is that thing and at P is the player. And as simple as that, bim, boom, boom, done, done, done. So now we can play function, test, headlock. Uh, actually, let's put OID in the sidebar and make sure that it's working. Um, so maybe it's not oh I forgot to add the subfolder of headlock you can get the subfolders and naming of your data pack correct um, I hope so now I have a score of one and system has a score of one next player that joins will have a score of two so now I do function test headlock lock and you can see that I can't turn um, there's one thing that happened there okay so let's do headlock unlock so let's make sure so I'll go here and I'll lock and you can see that it didn't uh, it got the rotation wrong because the entity is not rotate summoned in the same rotation as me so we can fix that easily by doing uh, TPing it to me so we can fix this little bug TP that thing to at s and then it should start with our orientation so headlock lock and boom, I'm stuck just like you would expect from the old versions where when you TP the player to themselves, they get stuck. And headlock unlock. And it looks like it's not actually killing them. So uh, 
Let's change this to at at s and do unlock and they're all gone. Okay, cool. So that kind of showed some debugging methods that I go through. Um, but yeah, very simple. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven commands total. Uh, Twelve if you count the scoreboard. So you should be able to handle this. Uh, this is just a quick way to create head locking and whatnot. Uh, one thing that you might want to add for stability purposes is um, when you initialize a headlock, you unlock it first. So this would help you um, have less likely to get spammed with entities. So this will just force it to not have multiple. So if I lock like this, and then I lock again, there's always only one entity. So that kind of like protects, but it makes it a little bit heavier when you do it. Anyways, that's all I had to show you guys today. Hopefully you found that useful. I have a lot more little problem solutions coming up. When I referenced dark, I was more referring to the fact that if I give myself blindness and I give myself night vision, it does nothing. And they removed that from the game, but I found a solution to it. So maybe I'll go over that next. Maybe I'll go over the atom structure saver next. But yeah, blindness, night vision, nothing. Anyways, if you guys found that useful, leave a like and uh, let me know what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.